Hello Internet, it's Tech Guy here with another video. This video is about my predictions of what I expect to see in the HTC One M9. So let's get into it. Before I go into this video, I just want to go over a quick disclaimer. I have never owned a HTC phone, just to say that straight off the bat. This list is all based off what I know from what's happening in all things related to Android, as you probably know from this channel. I follow mostly the Apple and Nintendo stuff, but I do keep up with Android stuff and all that because it's all tech related and all that. This is a phone I may possibly consider signing up for when my iPhone 5S contract expires. Cares Brownlee just only the other day announced that the HTC One M8, which is the 2014 model of the HTC One series of phones, was named overall the best smartphone of 2014, is what he called the best phone because he said that a lot of areas of the phone are better by some of their other competitors but they fall behind in other areas like build quality and stuff like that but the HTC One M8 was regarded as the best smartphone of 2014 according to Marquez Brownlee or MKBHD on YouTube and this video that I'll be doing the top five on is based on what to expect and what I personally want to see from them so let's get into it number five is the missing stuff so in relation to Android and all that, Samsung phones are known for having lots of gimmicky but at times useful features in them. That's excluding the bloatware and stuff like you get 50 gigs of Dropbox or anything like that. But HTC almost needs to play catch up in this area because there's some useful features in the Samsung Galaxy S series and even in the Note series that the HTC phones should almost copy like split-screen multitasking. Once again, I don't own a HTC phone and I'm not aware of if there is a split-screen multitasking feature, but you'd think with a screen-sized phone that big, or if they're going to make the screen even bigger in the next one, that they would have split-screen multitasking features to take better advantage of the larger displays. IP67 water and dust resistance was in the Samsung Galaxy S5. They should add a fingerprint scanner to the phone, but it's a matter of where exactly they would put it. If anything, it would probably be like that HTC One M7 Max or whatever it was called, where they put the fingerprint sensor on the back of the phone, but that was regarded as not very accurate and only as good as like the Samsung Galaxy S5's fingerprint scanner and also in the health area in relation to heart rate monitors and all that but realistically I don't see HTC doing anything like that they'd be more the type where you've got to get a separate wearable and connect that to your phone and go down that route so that's all the little missing stuff that's missing from the M8 that they should add to the M9 if they really want to compete even better with Samsung phones to make Samsung phones look a lot less popular and all that. But the fourth thing was the processor. So the HTC One M8 has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 processor at 2.3 gigahertz. The HTC One M9 is likely to have either a hexa-core, which is six cores, Snapdragon 808, or an octa-core, which is eight cores, Snapdragon 810, more likely the latter. The Snapdragon 801 is a 28 nanometer processor that's in regards to how big it is but the 808 and the 810 are 20 nanometers which means that they will be significantly smaller not quite half but they will be like roughly 30 percent smaller let's say which will result in better energy efficiency but are also 64-bit processors which yes they're playing catch up to apple's a7 processor but i am almost saying to myself that if I was to get a smartphone that is not another iPhone, I want to make sure it has a 64-bit processor in it because it seems like everything that I'm buying these days has 64-bit processors in them and they're just a lot more faster, in my opinion, like the iPhone 5S, the original iPad Air, my MacBook Pro with Retina display, and now Android phones are starting to bring out 64-bit processors within them. Also, the HTC One M8 has 2 gigabytes of RAM, but the M9 is expected to get 3 gigabytes of RAM, which would come really handy for heavy multitasking features like split-screen multitasking and all of that if they were to implement it. The third thing I want to talk about is Android 5.0 Lollipop. 
So HTC is known for saying they will update their devices up to a certain age since initial release date, I believe it's about two years, to run the latest version of Android with HTC said skin over it, which is HTC's equivalent of TouchWiz on Samsung phones for comparison. It will be great to have as it is the most up-to-date operating system and they could better create the hardware and HTC said software to work better alongside it. And Android 5.0 Lollipop, I'm referring to the stock version of Android for Lollipop that is at the moment, it does look really promising as a great step forward for Android and I was just as interested in this when it was released and announced and all that as I was for iOS 7 when that got a complete redesign. So it proves to show that Android has come a long way with 5.0 Lollipop and bringing a new refreshing look at that to the table and all that. There's the odd little thing that I'm not really keen on, like showing all your web browser tabs from Chrome in your multitasking tray and all that, but that's only just minor little things I'm slightly annoyed about. But apart from that, it does look really, really promising for the stock version of Android and hopefully... All these manufacturers, including Samsung and HTC, can hopefully make them even better by adding their respective skins over the top of the Android 5.0 Lollipop stock Android software. And hopefully Samsung don't stuff it up again like they always have. Number two is the camera. So one of the significant disadvantages of getting the HTC One M8 was the camera. I'm by no means someone who uses the camera that frequently, but... For argument's sake, for the times I want to use it, I want to be able to get the best camera shots that I can get, or on par with the iPhone 5S, as they are really great photos that I can get out of that phone. The HTC One M8 has a 4 ultra pixel camera, which is realistically a 4 megapixel image, but with larger sized pixels, which is better for low light performance and all that. Marquez Brownlee again, all known as MKBHD on YouTube, has also got a great video explaining all about this and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. I am hoping that they at least either have an 8 ultra pixel camera to be sort of on par with the latest iPhones and all that in terms of megapixels, even though they're ultra pixels, or a 13 megapixel camera that doesn't have any ultra pixels in it at all. But there's some rumours going around at the moment saying that it could even have up to a 20 megapixel camera. So I guess time will tell as to what route they will go down. But it seems like, based off what I'm reading on the internet at the moment, HTC seems like they're going to be ditching the ultra pixel route and going back to just straight megapixels. And finally, number one is probably the thing I'm most looking forward to with the new HTC One M9, despite also having an interest in all the other things in this list. At number one, we have the display and the build, in terms of build quality and all that. So the design of the HTC One M9, I'd imagine, should be similar to the M8. If they can fit a larger battery into the current M8's thickness size of phone, then I won't be so worried about a 9.35mm thickness of the M8. For comparison, my iPhone 5S, without a case on it, is obviously 7.6mm thin. For comparison, the iPhone 4 and 4S was 9.3mm thick, and that was from 2010 and 2011. So, it's not exactly thin or thick, it's just one of the thicker phones that are out there, but internally, if it's got a bigger battery in it, then I'm sure everybody would be more than happy to carry around a phone of that thickness and size. It is also rumoured that the current 2600 mAh battery in the M8, for comparison again, it's 2300 mAh in the M7, will grow up to a 3500 mAh battery in the HTC One M9, which makes sense if the screen is going to be 5.5 inches and they go down the route of a Quad HD screen. But the most interesting thing I'm curious about in the next HTC flagship is what the screen size will be. The HTC One M8 has a full 1080p screen at 5.0 inches, resulting in 441 ppi or pixels per inch. The M9 is rumoured to have either a 5.2 inch 
which is the leaked screenshot image that somebody's taken recently on nowhereelse.fr, posted it on the internet. That's for a 5.2 inch screen size, and we can tell because it's hard to see on the screen at the moment as I'm making this video, but in the bottom middle there, it does have the HTC logo, just like all the previous phones. So that's almost concrete leakage right there in terms of what the actual screen size will be. Or there's rumored to be a 5.5 inch screen, but they're both rumored to have a 2560 by 1440, which is four times the resolution of 1280 by 720, because you doubled each of those numbers. But that would result in 565 ppi on the 5.2 inch screen and 534 ppi on the 5.5 inch screen. So really dense displays in terms of pixels. All I really have to say is if they go down the 5.5 inch route, I hope they add a lot of features like split screen multitasking to make it even more worthwhile having a phone of that screen size. Because I think that was one of the biggest drawbacks with the HTC One M7 Max or whatever it was called was that it was such a huge screen phone but there wasn't really any good software features to take advantage of that larger screen size so hopefully HTC's learned from their lesson and implement something better to take better advantage of these even larger screens than they have previously launched before so that's it thank you very much for watching the question for you the audience is what do you want to see most in the HTC One M9? You can leave a comment below for the answer to this question. And if you enjoyed this, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this in the future. Now, before I finish, I just want to talk about one other thing. And that is a video that's coming up is another flashback video. But this time it's going to be on the history of iOS. That is from the original iPhone operating system that was on the very first iPhone, which was the iPhone 2G, but it was called the iPhone back then, all the way up to iOS 8, which was released this year in 2014. I have only just finished editing this video, and if you've been following me on Twitter, you'd probably know that originally when I edited the video that I'm referring to now, was 165 minutes long, I was almost saying to myself, would you rather watch that, or go and see The Hobbit in cinemas? But I've now got that all the way down to just under 100 minutes, and added a little bit of extra content into it while I was at it. So, because it is of such a great length, I honestly can't decide whether or not to upload them in separate parts and continue to do that every year for the new versions of iOS. So have separate videos for iPhone OS, iOS 2, the third one, iOS 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then when iOS 9 comes out, then do a flashback video for that and sort of put them all in a playlist to make it easier for people to watch continuously and it's forever growing. Or upload in one video and turn it into more of a movie like video because of its such great length so I would put more effort into an introduction sequence and all that. I know I have released quite a few videos now since the whole Tech Guy 1212 rebranding but I will be at least be stopped making videos at least from now that is after I finished making this video once it's uploaded and the flashback video that I'm referring to now, probably up until around mid to late January 2015 as like a Christmas break and holiday break and all that, just so you are all aware, so you're not expecting any videos from me within that time. So tell me in the comments if you'd like this HTC One M9 type of video, and if you have any other suggestions for flashback vid flash, three, two, one, for flashback videos that I can do in the future, like Mac OS X, Apple TV, Android operating system when they announced each yearly update for that, Samsung Galaxy S range, the Samsung Galaxy Note series, just any videos like that. If you want anything, any series of videos like that, please let me know in the comments section below. And here, right now, I am going to give you a trailer for the video that I'm planning on releasing, or at least starting to release, around a week from when this video has been uploaded. So, I'll leave it to you now to watch the trailer. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. Hit like, hit subscribe, check me out on Twitter and on Google+, and I will catch you later.